You're just gonna come home one day and the job will be gone. And so are you. I feel like there's more going on here than meets the eye. I heard somebody screaming for help. I was very harsh on him, you know, hard, you know, do your, do your chores, be very responsible. Don't screaming at him, screaming you, at him. At him. you didn't think that actually your son had just suffered oh, a huge traumatic event? I don't really think Pete knows what's in store for him. Sit down! Sit down, Pete! Sit down! I think Victoria was about ready to jump out of the chair and choke me and delay me out. Don't laugh! Quiet! Quiet! I can't see us living without Pete, but there's times where I just want to kick him out the door. It is despicable, and if I saw you do it, I would have you arrested. My name is Kelly. I live here with my husband, Peter, my son, Sean, my son, Petey, and my daughter, Caitlin. We have two dogs, Princess, a Roddy Pit, and Brooke, a pit bull. All right. Princess is very fearful of people. She runs and hides under the table, and she just doesn't go near anybody. If you're not going to take care of the dog, it's done. Why isn't it both your responsibility? We're focusing on his responsibility for the dog. But it, that's, I'm not getting the idea here. The idea was you two were supposed to train the dog. Shush! Brooke started out chewing up the furniture, chewing up phone charges, video games. The bunk beds cost me about $800. You can see the damage. One more thing, I find chewed, something chewed, I gotta replace some, it's gone. My dad threatened to get rid of Brooke all the time. You gotta help us, otherwise the dog's gonna be gone. Pete wants the dog gone because Sean refuses to walk them. I was deemed temporary, totally disabled. I can't go outside with the dogs, I can't walk them. I'm not losing Brooke like that. Then what do you have to do, Sean? Do you want your dog? Yes, I want my dog. You're gonna come home, and your father's gonna take the dog to the shelter, and she's gonna be gone. Regardless of how Kelly feels about the dog, how the children feel about the dog, if the dog can't get trained, she's gonna be gone. What was the agreement that we made when we got this dog? Me and you were trained dog. OK, then that, don't worry about me. What about you? My father does not help out with the dogs. He would just sit there and yell at him. No, get down. No. No. Back up. Back up. I'm not afraid of him yelling at me. I've been dealing with it the last five, ten years of my life. She ran out into the street. I think she's just too weak. I just want the dog gone. Hi, I'm Peter. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. Nice to meet you, Peter. Nice to meet you. Come right on in. Hello, lovely. This is Brooke. Oh, Brooke. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I'm Kelly. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Kelly. Sean. Hi, Sean. Peter. Hello, Peter. I'm Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin. And how old are you, Caitlin? Six. Get up. This is Princess. She's going to run from you. She's a little skittish. She's scared. Yeah. Scared. She only oh. did that when we moved into the new house. When people come in, Princess is a little on the shy side. She runs under the table and hides. Tell me the issues that you have with them. Um, Princess, she's just a little bit shy. OK. And okay. with Brooke, well, she's a menace to society. She is? She eats everything, toys. She eats everything I own. Cell phone chargers. She ate my cell phone chargers. Cell phones. Cell phones. Ate one of my phones. <laughs> and then she bites us. <laughs> Oh, she well, bites. she doesn't you. bite. She, she nibbles. Do? There's no such thing as a nibble from a dog this big and children so small. This is an accident waiting to happen. Why do you think she's doing it? Um, not enough stimulation. No, whoa, wait a second. Not... What did you do there? Whacked her. You whacked her? Do you do that a lot? Yes. All the time, both These of them. All oh, right. When I saw Caitlin hitting Brooke, I was shocked because Neither Kelly nor Pete did anything about it. Any dog can be provoked to react negatively if they are teased or if some sort of pain is inflicted upon them. Um, what's happened to your knee? Um, I got hurt on the job. I'm an EMT. How did you hurt it? Um, lifting a patient. Since Kelly can't really do anything, everything, I basically take the brunt of the cleaning. Pete is working all day, all night. Doesn't help much around the house. It makes me feel um, sad. Do you work? Yes, I'm operations Two manager jobs. for a restaurant. OK. okay. And uh, how long do you work for during the day? Uh, about 12, 14 hours, six days a week. Who walks the dogs then? Um, it's supposed to be Sean, but he doesn't. All right. 
It was supposed to be mine and my mom's and my father's job, but my mom got hurt, so she can't do anything anymore. Do they not get exercise at all? They um, go out in the backyard. I don't think the couple realizes just how much these dogs need to be outside. They need to be played with. They need to be walked for hours a day. Are there arguments in this house over the dogs? Huge arguments. He's selfish. Chaotic. Who's selfish? Peter's. Why, why do you say that? Because it's whatever he wants, that's the way it is, and he doesn't help. He doesn't, it's what he wants to do first, and he doesn't consider anybody else before that. I'm not home all the time. When I come home, I like the house clean. I have a high standard. OK. And screams a lot. You scream Yeah, I scream at them. Why do you scream? Is it because you, why do you scream? I just scream. Don't know why. One thing that you can put into your brain, store away, lock up, is that all the shouting, all the fighting, really affects the dog in a stressful way, both dogs. And you know one of the reasons why dogs chew is because they get sometimes upset. The way I feel about Brooke, it's really hard to explain. I really don't feel like I have time at all for the dogs. Have you ever wanted these dogs gone? Um, not the four of us. I have the sweetest dogs in the world, and I, I don't want to have to get rid of them. You yeah. have? Yeah. Brooke, all the uh, destruction that she's done and the money that I've spent over the past year replacing everything. Can you show me some of the destruction? Sure, no problem. Okay. I will definitely will. I did say I would help train the dog, but after the money and the chewing and then the destruction, I washed my hands with the dog. Do you want to come in here to the little boy's room? Okay. You want to, this is their bunk beds. This is yes. the first day. Oh, she the first chewed. day? First yeah. day, chewed here. Wow. Right here. Across here. She gnawed on this. The prescription for these dogs is pretty simple. Get them out more, more exercise, tire them out. But it is going to take time, and I don't know whether the family has the ability or the time. Would you say this household's a little out of control with the kids? Oh, completely out of control. And him not being home, um, I try to control as much as I can. I happen to be very, a lot more strict than he is with the kids, but... Too strict? No, she's strict. She's a little strict on Sean, but, you know. Why? I didn't let him walk home from high school until May. She doesn't unlock. Is it kind of rough around here? No, you know what, it's, it's actually pretty nice. We've had only one incident in the two years we're living here last August. What happened? Um, we had a guy shot five times down the block and Sean found them. Yeah. Kelly and Pete told me of an incident that happened a year ago. Last year, I took the dog out for a walk, and I heard three loud sounds. And I didn't know what they were at first. There was a guy that was shot up my block. I heard somebody screaming for help never seen somebody shot right in front of me, and the blood was taking up most of the sidewalk. Sean was definitely traumatized by that shooting. He said he still sees the blood trailing down the driveway. The incident made me very depressed. I just didn't tell anyone. I didn't want to walk the dogs at all. I'm scared that every time I go near the house that it might happen again. It's bad. I can't do it. Oh, my god. Which is why we think he won't walk Brooke anymore. You think, or have you asked him? Yeah, we've asked him. But for a year, he didn't tell us the truth. I was very harsh on him. You know, hard, you know, do your, do your chores, be very at, responsible. Don't... Screaming at him. Screaming you, at him. you didn't think that actually there could be a possibility that your son had just suffered oh, a huge a traumatic event? It affects Sean considerably that his father is hard on him. Screams and hoops and hollers and says, Ma, what did I do? And I'm like, Daddy probably just had a bad day at work. I try and play it off, but Sean just only wants his father's attention. I knew it was a possibility. I know he's a very strong, he's a very strong kid. How traumatic for a young boy to witness what he witnessed. Can't Pete figure out the reason why Sean didn't want to walk his dog? That's not rocket science. Oh my God. Everything that you're dealing with in your personal life, with your family's issues, your son going through a trauma, witnessing a murder. 
and a dog that is being very destructive. <laughs> it's probably getting the brunt of a lot of your frustration. That's a lot. Do you feel like you've been supported by Pete throughout all of this? No. I can't handle things on my own. Not with the dogs, not with the kids. I need more support and more help. Since Peter's rarely at home and Kelly's injured and the other little kids are too small, I really wanted just to walk with Sean to ask him about the incident, how he felt. Sean, because you're the only person that walks the dog, I'd like to see you walk. That's all right? Hmm? And we'll go and see how we'll that goes. Look at her leash. OK. If Victoria can't help, I don't know what I will do. I love these dogs. I'd do anything for them. Yes, she does pull, doesn't she? Yeah, she pulls a lot. I see. Yes, so not such a great uh, walking experience, Sean. No. She just wants to run. She does, bless her heart. She has no uh, opportunity to run. Goodness me. I usually go the back way, which okay. is uh, up the street that way. Ah. This is the area where, where the shooting happened? Right there. Over there. What happened on that day? Um, I was walking Brooke. We got around a little bit back there, and I heard three loud sounds while I was around the corner. I didn't know what they were. I thought it was kids playing with firecrackers or fireworks. Then when I was coming back, I heard somebody screaming for help. So I just ran to my house and told my mother, and then I grabbed her bag and she ran up. So then when I came over to the house, that's when I saw him, and I completely just spaced out, like, oh my god, this dude was shot, and he's bleeding everywhere. In my head, I was panicking, but after that, I didn't tell anybody. I went to the house, and I just broke down. It's a year later. You haven't been able to walk your dog because of it. What place are you in right now? I'm in the place where I know I have to take responsibilities and walk the dog and that I have to get over what happened. It's done, it's not gonna happen again, that I just need to get over it. It's quite upsetting to hear Sean say he's got to get over this. He seems ashamed that he's finding it tough. He went through a huge trauma. I think you need to heal. If you open up and you give it time and you, you admit to yourself that this was a traumatic experience and you heal yourself. You witness something that most people in their lifetime will never witness. And you dealt with it in an incredibly brave, courageous, amazing way. So it's very approachable. You could tell her basically anything and she'll have something to say that's positive instead of negative. Would you like to be able to go on walks in the evening with your dad? Would that make it easier for you to walk? If he's there, I won't be so scared of anything happening again, because I know he'll be right by my side the whole time. OK. I'm glad you said that, because that gives me a plan. This family has so much going on. If they're going to fix this, they're going to have to get together and support each other. When I come in here, I think of one word, especially for you, and that's overwhelmed. The kids, the dogs, his job, himself, um, my injury, it's just, it feels like I'm choking, like I'm drowning in water. Pete's in like his own little world. I don't think he sees how much we really need his help at home. I want to try and understand you, because all I've seen of you today is a, this relatively passive man. What is this, this inability to be able to give Kelly the support that she needs? And Kelly's crying like this. How does that make you feel? Uh, sometimes. I think it has something to do with the injury, or she cries just to cry. And what do you tell me? I tell you to stop crying. There's no That's reason it. to really cry. Okay. Reason to cry. My stress level is still pretty high. So I really don't care what Kelly says. I don't want to do nothing. Just leave me alone. Well, what, what, where have you been? Does it take me, a freaking dog trainer, to come into the house? So where do we go from here? If these issues don't change, your dog's behavior never will. I didn't realize it until now. So we're going to work with the dogs, 
work with you guys and hopefully get you on a better track than when I first came. I would love that. I would like that. The family needs Peter to care about these dogs. More importantly, the family needs Peter to care about them. And I'm not sure at the moment that he does. I want you to write down, both of you, what you need for yourselves, what you need from the other person, what you need from your family, and what kind of person do you want to be? I'm hoping that Pete will step up and realize how much the dog definitely means to the family. I, I need him to step up. It's not what I want. I need him to. If there's anything lacking, say it. Be honest, OK? It's all I've ever asked him to do. The dogs need exercise and relief. And since Peter's away at work, I'm going to train with Sean. Sean has difficulty walking Brooke because she pulls like a freight train. Even though Sean's been through a horrendous ordeal, if I can make just this part of it more comfortable for him, I hope that that's going to help. Good. This is the new harness, and this is going to make your walking life a lot easier. OK. She can still pull with it on, but it limits the pulling. Brooke will literally drag me from the minute I walk outside to the minute I tell her to go home. So I don't think I ever will be able to. Here you go. Whoa. OK. Now, this doesn't work for all dogs. Plus, we probably need to resize it. So we'll see. Feels a lot better now that I know that it's not attached to a collar. OK. So if I pull back on her, the collar's not choking her. The harness is definitely going to help the pulling, but Sean needs a lot more help than that if he's going to be able to feel better about what he witnessed. So now, when she launches ahead, just stop. Just stop. She looks back. When she moves her body back, relaxes on the leash, you can go forward. So just wait. OK, she came back to you. Now you go. You wait for her to give some kind of focus or contact. I taught Sean to stop until Brooke releases. A, you're not reinforcing the pulling but also you're getting your dog's focus. Good. This might take a while. Good, she came around? Good, now you continue. And tell her, good girl, give her feedback Very now, good. okay? Good girl, good girl, no. No, Deb, I don't want you to even say no. No. Nothing, you know, you can talk less to her. There's a lot of things for the dog to focus on other than Sean. But if Sean can get her attention and her focus on him when he needs it, then walking's gonna be a lot easier. Now she's walking right by your side. I hope this fear of walking will dissipate and that you can turn your head from the fear that you had after the incident to now the pleasure that you're going to get walking your dog. Walking your dog creates such an amazing bond, even more than you already have. The best thing about having Victoria here is that the dog is finally getting trained. I'm learning from all my mistakes. I'm learning what to do, and her methods really do work. Come on. I've helped Sean take the first step. Now it's up to Peter to help support his son, and I really hope he does that. All right, walk a proudly home. Best right. walk ever. Coming up. Give Peter up. There is nothing worse, I tell you, than somebody that takes out all their frustration on vulnerable beings. If I saw Pete doing what I hear he does to his dogs, I would take him There's down. such a heavy cloud hanging over this family. They see failure in everything. So I wanted to show them how easy it is to train their dogs. And I wanted to start with Princess's shyness. Has she always been like this, a little reserved? No. When we moved from the new house, or the old house, to here, that's when she started sort of kind of being shy. When people come in the house, Princess is very fearful of people. She runs and hides under the table. It's OK, Princess. So what I'd like to do is just take you through the process of what you need to do when someone comes. I have one of your neighbors outside. I'm going to have the guest ring. I want you to tell your guest when she comes through the door, please just ignore the dogs. OK. One of the ways a person can really, really help Princess relax is by relieving social pressure, which means coming in the door and having that guest say absolutely nothing. Hi, Pat. Hi, Kelly. How are you? So before I let you in, I just want you to ignore the dogs. OK. OK, and they'll just 
and you're gonna come in and sit down, okay? Sure. Hey, hi, Pat. Hi. 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 Nice to hi. meet How's you. Everything? Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Okay, you're gonna sit in the rocking chair here and just ignore them. Okay. This is Caitlin. Hi, hi Caitlin. And Sean. Princess surprised everyone the minute Pat sat down. The results were immediate. Pat, have you no. met these dogs before? No, not at all. I've never seen that with Princess. Princess was just amazing today, and I never thought I'd see Princess not afraid of somebody new coming in the house. And you have a dog yourself? Yes, I do. Yes, they can smell that dog on oh, you, like. which is great. <laughs> it was really lovely to see Princess nudging Pat's hand. This was huge. By ignoring Princess, that took pressure off her. By giving her the time where she could come up to greet the guest, made her feel so much more comfortable. They are cute. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Nice. When there's so much family anger and frustration and pain and negativity. Do you want your dog? Yes, I want my dog. You're gonna come home and your father's gonna take the dog to the shelter and she's gonna be gone. Get down! That's it! It's difficult for them to see what they have right in front of them. I love this with your pieces of paper. Oh. It's awesome. Are you tired? I had to pull teeth. Take it out. Okay. There seems to be such a disconnect between Peter and Kelly, so I had them write down their thoughts and what they wanted from each other so that hopefully this would be a place from which they could move forward. Read what you wrote. I want Kelly to stop bothering me about my job. It means if I have to stay late, not to give me an attitude about it over the phone, just let me do what I have to do to support my family financially. A better connection with uh, my children, especially Sean. And that was pretty much what I wrote down for my family. So you reap what you sow. If you want your kids to be with you more, if you want your kids to respect you and have a better relationship with you, you got to give it to them. What did you write? I want Pete to be home more. I want more of Pete's attention in a positive way. I want Pete to be the dad I know he can be. I want Pete to want to be a part of this family. Basically, all that extends from work. Obviously, if he gets fired from his job, there's no money coming in. Oh, that is. So, I understand that. I, I just wish he would put us a little bit more before the job. So you're managing everything, I'm basically. an operations manager. That's con total control of the business. The job is that demanding. It's worse than being married to a doctor. You're married to your work. You're married to your family. You have to somehow find a balance. And I also think you have to want to, because I don't know if you actually really want to. No, I don't. Do you really want it? Peter says he's going to participate in training the dogs, but I don't believe him at all. He is very unemotional, and he's put this huge wall up that's very difficult to break down. What do you want for the dogs? I want Princess to stop being so fearful of people. I want Brooke to be able to stay with us without consequences, and I want Princess and Brooke to be happy living with us. The reason why Princess doesn't come near you is because when she was first home with us, you beat her up. What did you do? When you say beat Princess up, what did you do? She came at me. She never came at you. She, no, no, she came at she me. She never came at you. What did you do to I her? I popped her in the nose, right in the snout. And then he since kicks then she the in... dogs, he punches dogs. He do. He's kicked oh, Brooke in the ribs. I am not a violent person, but if I saw Pete doing what I hear he does to his dogs, I would take him down. There is nothing worse, I tell you, than somebody that takes out all their frustration on vulnerable beings. You kick dogs, you do that kind of thing. I don't care whether you tapped her on the nose, you hit her on the bum, you kicked her in the ribs, whatever. It's abuse. It is absolute abuse, and you know, it is, it is despicable. And if I saw you do it, I would have you arrested. I would have you arrested for abuse. I would do that. I really wanted Pete to know that his behavior was not just affecting the dogs in a negative way, but affecting his family, especially his children. It's not a big leap now to think that Caitlin might have just learned that it was okay to hit the dogs by witnessing her father do it. One day, the dogs are gonna come. They're gonna remember it. They're gonna bite your kids. That happened in the past, and, uh, you know, that was when I was younger and stupid. 
Pete doesn't abuse Princess anymore. It's more Brooke, because um, Brooke is kind of bad, but doesn't deserve to be hit the way she does. It takes a lot to piss me off. And then when I get, do get set off, you can't stop. Not I can't me, I have stop. a short fuse. Has he ever admitted it before? No. So do you see that as progress? Absolutely. I think the message is definitely starting to sink in with Pete, and I couldn't be happier. I really hope that this now is going to help, hopefully, to start you on a, on a new path. I've heard it before. It works yeah. for a couple of months, and then yeah. he's back to the old Pete. Yeah. You are going to start the father and son walk tonight. It doesn't have to be very long, but he really wants you to walk with him. Can, can you be, can you just start off afresh as new Pete? I can try. Can you try? I can try. Peter says he wants to change, but Kelly's skeptical and I actually agree with her. But I really hope he can change because his family needs him and his dogs need him too. Sean needs help with his trauma. However much he says he doesn't, what place are you in right now? That I just need to get over it. I believe Sean will gain confidence when he goes out walking with his father. It's one of the rare days that Peter's actually home, so I wanted to check in with him and Sean to see how the walk went. Hi. Hi. Hello. How's everything? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Caitlin. How was walking the dogs? Did you walk the dogs today? I walked. Uh, he, he was because I, I was actually, I had to go do some errands this morning, so. Oh my gosh, you made the commitment yesterday and you already broke it today. Yep. <gasps> I got up and I left and I didn't realize that I was already halfway down to. If Pete can't even keep his promise for 12 hours, goodness knows what it's going to be like when I leave. Pete promised his family that he was going to do the morning walk. And the next day, he had to do other things. He forgot. Well. Seriously, 12 hours later and you forget, this is the first day where you've promised to take the dogs out. Pete, you are now going to be walking with Sean. OK. You, you're kind of the only person in this house that doesn't really know any of the training that we've done because you haven't been here. So now I want Sean to teach you. OK. Yeah. I can set Sean on the right path of being able to walk for it properly, but only his dad, I think, can give him the real confidence of walking with him in the evening so that he gets over his fear of walking in the area. So take it away, Sean, and teach your dad how to walk her. How do we do this? All right. First, uh, Victoria said that when she starts pulling, you stop, let her come back to you. OK. And then you start going again. OK. Like that, now we start going. Sean was really giving clear directions. It's great for me as a trainer to hear how someone has learned. She just said, wait. OK. Or if you don't feel like waiting, you turn around and say, let's go. And you turn around and go. Wait a little bit. Let's go. And keep going. Mm, let me try it. <clears throat> Come on, Brooke. Come on. Come on. Come on. You could tell from her body language that Brooke really doesn't want to go walking with Peter, and I'm not surprised. She's much more bonded with Sean. And I think past history with Peter has also caused that. It's because she's afraid of you. Now go. Now you go again? Just keep going. I showed my father how to walk Brooke. It was really weird, him being the student and me being the teacher, just the other way around. But actually, Really good to see him in his calm state. Nope. Victoria said, don't just say anything, just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Okay. I want Sean and Peter to bond in their walk, so I'm going to take a step back and send them on their way. I feel better now that I know that I'm not alone with walking the dog, so I have you, I have the dogs, and I'm not worrying about what happened. Good. I'm proud of Sean walking the dog. I think that's a nice stress reliever, uh, also a good exercise and communication tool that I can have with Sean. Well, I'm going to take this responsibility of walking the dog in the morning. OK. And then I'll do it at night. I'll do it not... with you at night. I hope it's going to happen. I think it will. Hopefully, he'll keep up with what he says. Come on, girl. 
I think Peter's made some real progress, but I wanted to show him that the way he interacts with his dogs and his family are going to have a real influence on their behavior. So I wanted to try an experiment. Sit down. Go sit on. down, Pete. Sit down. Go on. Go on. What did I tell you? Sit down. Sean, stand up. <laughs> stand up. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't He's laugh. being serious. Did I tell you to speak? <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. Uh, it reminds me of my dad. Does it? I don't think I need to hammer it home to Pete anymore about how his behavior is affecting his family and his dogs. If he doesn't get it by now, after everything I've said to him, he's never gonna get it. The way this family speaks to each other is in a heightened all the time. Get off, do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, I think is, it stresses out your dogs. I think Pete not only needs to learn a bit of positive reinforcement with his dogs, but also with his children and with his wife. I want you to try and do with your dogs, instead of shouting at them, shouting them at, it's just, it's just almost fueling the fire. Okay. Because, you know, dogs are very good hearing. You don't need to shout at them, because they can hear really well. Here's what I want you to try do. Let's say Brooke gets on the couch. I don't want you to say, off. I want you to say, off. Caitlin, off. <laughs> good, good, excellent. <laughs> Okay. I've said it. Can you now instill the sort of the new rules about how you're going to discipline the dogs? Absolutely. I didn't see what was going on in my own home. With Victoria coming in, she opened my eyes to everything. Coming up. Are you willing to reconnect? It's gone in one ear and out the other. Are you going to be able to transform yourself? The people in this house are very wounded. Kelly's knee injury, <laughs> Sean's trauma. Peter hasn't really done what is needed to help his family. You're just too weak. So I've got to get through to him somehow before it's too late. I want to introduce you to Kathy and Kerry. Kerry Hi. is the therapy Hi. dog, Hi. the Good Dog Foundation. Um, and I also want to introduce you to Juliet, Hi. who is a social worker. She specializes in the human animal bond. I wanted them to speak to you a little bit about what our own dogs can do for us in our homes. I'm hoping that I can show Peter how dogs can really be part of his family's healing process rather than the dogs being just a source of stress. We work with a lot of people to help people reduce their stress through the dogs, and it sounds like there's a lot of stress in your house. I and have a, if I you have can, a immense amount of stress. Yeah, if you can look at your dog as, as someone that can help you with that, and it's amazing just sitting and petting a dog, how calming it is. Are you willing to reconnect? Because remember I said, when a dog has a fear memory, that is imprinted in the brain forever. Are you going to be able to transform yourself? Yes, I am. I finally get to see my father's soft side, which is very hard to see. He's never, he's always in this grumpy, moody mood, frustrated, angry. Then again, people change and He's changing, which is awesome. The volume in your home is very big. Everybody communicates by shouting. No, get down. You communicate with your dogs by shouting, Pete. But I love being able, my dog's focus to come onto me and for them to listen to me with me just saying, come to me, sit, watch me. That's all I need to do. Would that be strange for you to do that? Very. <laughs> well, I'm gonna change everything, I'm gonna change everything around. Um, the way I act, um, the way I speak to Kelly and the kids and the dogs. Really, ever since I've been at your house, I've, I've never seen you, maybe pet the dog once. Do you wanna meet her? Do you wanna yeah, meet she this She's very nice and pleasant. I don't think Pete's a bad man at all. I think he doesn't deal with stress very well. But I hope he's taking everything in, because ultimately, it's going to make his life a lot easier. Hi. 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 That's fine. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, you're very nice. It was pretty emotional, and I finally get to see my father's soft side. That's the first time, and I'm not going to forget it. I want you to have this feeling with your own dogs. Feels good. Good.
When I first came into this home, I noticed that Princess was really shy. Peter admitted to being quite abusive to her. So I've really got to up the stakes here. If the dogs aren't afraid of a pretty intimidating guy coming to the house, then there's hope for Pete. When Pat came with Princess, that was great. And I think um, Princess really liked her. Uh, I also think with all of us coming in and out as well, she's kind of got a little desensitized, but I want to bring a man in. Um, he's your neighbor. He's never been in here. I would like you, Kelly, to do this because I want Pete to watch because he wasn't here the okay. last time we did it. And I think it's really important. Relieving social pressure is so important for dogs that are fearful. And Pat was one thing, but having a man come into the house, Princess might retreat again. I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope not. When I first came into this home, I noticed that Princess was really shy. So I've really got to up the stakes here. I want to bring a man in. He's never been in here. Hey, Lou. Hi, Kevin. I'm just going to ask you, when you come in, just I'm going to sit you down in the chair okay. and just ignore the dogs. OK, okay? got it. Come on in. Hey, guys. Come on in. Just ignore her. Walk right through. Go into the living room. Hi. How you doing? Good. Good, you? Hey, Pete. Hey, Lou. Hey, Lou. Lou was an ex-Marine, so he's big and muscular. And when uh, he came in, it was like, oh, God, this intimidating guy coming in. Princess is going to run. Princess is under, well, she went to her place, but now, all of a sudden, so don't touch her yet. And when she did, I was like, Phew, she did it. Yes. Good girl. Just start to a little bit to stroke her. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good girl. That's pretty <laughs> amazing. Yeah, usually she's... Uh, she's usually very... hiding. Princess, she came right over. So it's, it's, it's good to see. Pete, I want you to do this. Take charge when you're here with the family to do this. And you can't have too many people in this home. Okay. Every person does exactly the same thing. Soon, Princess isn't going to be way as nervous. I think since Victoria has been here, uh, she opened my eyes to a lot of, a lot of things. Maybe Pete has hope that seeing Princess's reaction to a strange man coming to their home, that they'll react to Pete like that. But I really do think, because of the training we've done, but also because of the coming and going of all these people in your home, that she's really coping so much better. So we've done a lot of things with the dogs. We Hopefully now Princess and um, Brooke are going to be walked more. And I think them being walked more is going to relieve anxiety, is going to relieve the chewing. Because when you have tired dogs, you go out, they don't chew. Yeah, leave yeah, her with yeah. some chew toys so that she has toys to chew on, so she chews on the toys rather than everywhere else. There has been no distraction since I've been at the home, even when the family have left. And I think this is a testament to the fact that the dogs are tired. So when the dogs are tired, they're left by themselves, they don't chew. Sean, for you, how do you feel now after we did work together? I'm not afraid to walk the dogs. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm not worried about being dragged down the street now that Brooke has the harness and she's not pulling at all. I'm glad I get to walk with my dad. I'm really glad that you got to that point. I felt like when I first came here, it was every man for themselves. All the family were working um, against each other. Now, I hope they work with each other. Princess, come on. Since Victoria was here last, um, Pete actually walks the dogs. Come on. I'm proud of Sean. Uh, he stepped up a lot the past couple of weeks. Walking with Sean has been really, really good. A very good communication with him. I really want to have a father bond relationship more than what we did in the past. How was school today? It was good. Uh, I'm still getting used to where my classes are. It's been fun walking the dogs with my dad. Our relationship's gotten better. He's not yelling at me. Home sweet home. Sean seems to be a lot happier. I think some of the things that she said to him and, and told him helped his confidence. Who's Tail that? wagon. Hi. Yeah, so now leave him alone. Uh, Let's see what she does. What I really need to work on is my connection with my kids. I want to make myself a better person, make myself a better father and a dog owner. Easy. Slow. Tell her easy. easy. Good girl. 
I'm definitely feeling less overwhelmed. I'm definitely finding a lot more peace. I'm definitely getting more help, which is exactly what I needed. My dogs are here, my kids are here, my husband is here. Everybody's here together, and that's what I wanted, because my dogs are a part of my family. The Heinz family have been through so much the past year, and I thought their stark backyard was just symbolic of their defeatist attitude. So I've asked my friends at Home Depot to make their backyard a little bit more people and dog friendly and bring some cheer into their lives. Yeah, hi, we're looking to redo our backyard, plant some stuff. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.